Hey folks, Quillington here and welcome to Let's Play Project Zomboid. It's about six years ago on this channel that we did a Let's Try for Zomboid and since then the game hasn't made an appearance on the channel at all. And in fact, I haven't actually played this very much. Um, but there is a big update currently in the works. I mean, this is a so this is a, a small indie early access game that's been in the works for forever and it's constantly being updated and currently there is a big at the so-called animation update being worked on right now which is a uh, version 41 it is still very much in the works still very much um a lot of things changing uh on a very rapid basis here in this this animation update uh so you know there might be some some wonky things going on uh if you uh if you want to try out project zomboid you might just want to try with the base version version uh 40 which um which might be a little bit more stable and a little bit more balanced, but we're going to go ahead and give this a go. What is Project Zomboid? Well, it is a post-apocalyptic zombie survival RPG. Um, the Probably the closest comparison um, compared to, you know, because there's a lot of things that sort of would fall under that genre. I'd say the closest comparison to Project Zomboid is something like Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead in terms of the depth and breadth of gameplay as well as the, the, the sheer difficulty and the fact that you are probably going to die uh, and probably in not too much time. Unlike Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, this is isometric and it's also in real time as opposed to turn-based and sort of top-down roguelike -y kind of thing. But it is utterly, utterly wonderful. So we're going to go ahead and jump in uh, into a solo game over here. So we've got we've got a variety of um, of difficulty options to choose from now with a, rather than a single sort of survivor mode and then some some scenarios. Uh, I think we'll go with survivor here, which is sort of the original challenging playstyle based on the previous survival mode. So um, it says longer lifespan. I don't know if that's going to be that long, but we'll see. We're not going to go apocalypse of like things are really terrible or a builder which is like really chill we'll go with uh we'll go ahead with survivor you can also tune your difficulty whenever you want with uh, the custom side sandbox as well the the game has one map the map is not randomly generated it is a fixed map set uh, based on um the area of like knox county i think in kentucky uh the setting by the way is 1993 um, and, but there are four starting towns within this county that you can choose to start in. I'm going to start in Riverside here. I really don't know much of, about the map because I haven't played that much of this game. So there's going to be a lot of unknowns. Um, but what I like about Riverside is that it's on a definitive edge of the map. So I will be a little less lost, perhaps, because we're going to be on sort of... Um, well, the map's tilted, so actually I don't know which side is supposed to be north versus east or whatever. But um, to me, it looks like the northeastern edge of the map, but that might count as the north edge or the east edge, depending on how the, the tilt of the map is actually supposed to be oriented. Um, and there's a river there, so we'll sort of have something to keep our bearings because the, the, the map is massive and um, it'd be easy to get lost. You get to set up your initial character over here with um with some traits you can you, you, you can always tune your own traits and uh, flaws over here positive perks negative perks i don't know if you want to think about it that way um as well as choose an occupation the occupations in addition to sort of pre-setting up some of these traits um can give you certain bonuses that you might not be able to get otherwise not everything is explicitly listed maybe for some of these there's some some extra bonuses um i don't know veteran it does say desensitized and and whatnot uh, oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, right over there. So um, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna play as kind of a stealthy burglar type. And specifically, the reason I wanna do that is because there is a negative trait called pacifist. And I suspect this is probably considered to be like, it's probably fairly poor choice overall. But for, for the channel memes, we're gonna go pacifist. So I'm gonna take burglar over here because it does start us off with, I actually don't know what light footed and nimble necessarily does. I mean, sneaking seems fairly obvious. I think light-footed might mean you make less noise when you walk, and I think sneaking might just be you're less visible when you're sneaking. Um, not quite sure about nimble. Again, there's a lot about this game I really don't know. There's a wiki and we could keep referencing it back and forth, but I think we're gonna leave it uh, as is. Now, um, the burglar, um, the burglar profession here did uh, did have still two points left over because unemployed basically you have nothing innate but you've got eight 
free trade points, and everything's sort of balanced around that. So we take Burglar, we had two points left over. But Pacifist cost us four, so now we've got a deficit of two, and we can't continue. Um, so I'm going to have to grab a negative trait. Um, Hemophobic is probably okay. Um, in multiplayer, it's a little bit crappier, I think, because you can't first aid on other people. But here we can still fo uh, first aid on ourselves, but it causes us great panic. We do not like blood. So we can do that. Of course, we've got positive points. We might want to grab something else as well. Um, from what I've heard online, grabbing something like High Thirst isn't actually that bad. Um, I mean, up until the water system fails, when power goes out and the water goes out, then it can be a little bit more difficult, but I don't actually expect to even survive that long. Um, so I think I will grab that. So now we actually have seven more points to spend. Feels like if we're going to be kind of a cat burglar, we should have cat's eyes, better vision at night, uh, which seems fairly smart. Um... I mean, we could have Brave so that we don't panic as often, which isn't a terrible thing. We could take Graceful for less noise or Inconspicuous to be less noticed, which might make us, like, really, really, really stealthy. Uh, runner, Sower, Amateur Mechanic. Hmm. You know, it might be fun to uh, have a little bit of mechanics and maybe be able to assemble a car or something like that. I mean, it will... Um, cars are noisy. Gymnast for even more light-footed nimbleness. Uh, is, that, is that becoming too crazy? It might be. Bonus to fishing. Bonus to long blunt. Um, first aider, gardener. Transfer items faster. I mean, that seems thematically like dexterous would really fit us. Even though I'm not sure how important it is, but it feels good. A fast driver. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we just stack some of these. How about lucky? We want to just be lucky? Let's be lucky. And uh, just because we have a point left over, we'll take speed demon. Although... I'm not convinced that's something we're necessarily looking for, but there we go. So we're going to go with this, and we are going to be playing as Petra. Um, and I want—I was trying to think of a witty last name to actually give a shout out to uh, to Mathis Games, who plays this a lot, uh, and is quite. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 the stories that he weaves in in his series are really amazing. So definitely a shout out to uh, to Mathis. Um, so. Uh, Shootau. No, that doesn't look right. I, no, I don't know. We'll just go with 18. Petra 18 is who we're going to be playing as. Uh, female over here. So with the animation update, your characters are now sort of 3D models as opposed to kind of pre-drawn sprites and things. It's going to give them a lot more flexibility for various animations as well as clothing layers and all kinds of things like that. Um, I do think like the, the models are, are kind of like low res and some of the animations are a little bit wacky, but... Yeah, all right, it's still gonna be fine. Um, we've got a bunch of cool hairstyles we can give ourselves. <laughs> Bald. Uh, pulled back. I don't know, ponytail seems kind of practical. Uh, is this our hair color? Yeah, dark hair? Sure. And then we can start with clothing, um, which is kind of interesting because it's like, isn't this gonna go, you know, wouldn't we be better the more clothing we have? Maybe we'll just start with it as a, as a default over here. I guess we can randomize things. Did it? Why did it change my name? Oh, when I changed to female, I bet. It reset the name. Aha. All right. Anyway, let's play. These are the end times. And actually, this this has the uh, the best loading screen almost of, of any game, mostly because of one phrase, which will come up in a minute. There is no hope of survival. Oh no, I clicked, I, I was trying to click through that panel, I clicked to the last thing. It, it's supposed to say, this is how you died. Because the expectation is, in fact, that you will die. So I did cut that off, which is a little too bad. Anyway, so here is, um, here's the game. So I have to say, there's one thing with the animation update that feels very different from before. Now your character, like, because of the actual animation, there's, like, there's time for some of the animations to happen, like, turning around. Whereas the game used to be super fast, super responsive, as you made little clicks. I feel like the music might be a little loud. Um, I think we're going to bring that down just a scooch. Maybe just sort of overall here. Uh, and maybe a little like that as well. Okay, let's try this and see how that feels. 
But yeah, so now there's a sort of bit of a momentum and a kind of floatiness to the movement that makes it a lot less sharp. Also, the uh, the previous art I thought was was kind of cute for the uh, the characters, both the male and female uh, art. But now you do have a lot more as you wear different clothing. It's going to be a lot more noticeable. So, but you can see it's still pretty pixely. I mean, graphic options. Um, I mean, I don't know, man. Like. It, it's, it, it is a little bit of a lo-fi graphic look, but again, the richness of the game is just ridiculous. Temperature debug over here. Skin response, skin temperature. Interesting. Protection, these these are new new tabs that weren't in uh, the previous build, which is kind of cool. Also, yeah, there's like belt slots over here. I think that might allow you to quickly change between um, items that are on your belt, which is kind of nifty. Franklin Volalin Key. So, I don't think we're in our house, right? Here's the thing. We are we are a burglar, and I feel like what might have happened is maybe we got in a little bit of trouble somewhere. And we were sort of sort of forced to flee, and we made our way into Knox County here just as this zombie inf infestation started to fall. And now we're sort of trapped inside of Knox County, which is in this giant exclusion zone. The military sort of locked up this area. No one can enter or exit. And meanwhile, zombies have started popping up everywhere. We've got, oh, we've got one over there in the uh, the front yard. And another house across the way. So we're in a fairly tiny house here. Sneaky, sneaky. Okay. There's a new uh, crouch mode that you can do for lots of stealth now. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna at least loot this very first house. I like to, um, to sort of pin this loot window open um, like this so that as I move around, it's very obvious if I come by something that is lootable. Although this house, okay, so we've got a key here. I guess we'll, uh, we'll go and put it right on our key ring to keep that nice and organized. Um, but seriously, is this house, how empty is this house? Oh, this is not, not good. Okay, that's the door. Um, that key, is that, is that the van key? Is that what that is? Franklin Value Line. Oh, that's the key to a van. I thought it was someone's name. It, it's a completely empty house. Anything at the back? We got a dead body over there. Could have something on it. Bathroom here. Have a little drink of water. Alright, well, I guess we are going to have to leave right away. So yeah, if you hold down the right mouse button, you can enter a little bit of a sneak mode. Um, oh, zombie over here. Um, nothing in the garbage can? No. Let's go ahead and uh, open the back here. Twine. Uh, twine can be used in some crafting, I think. I don't think we want any of the rest. We'll hop into the vehicle. The lock is broken. I might be able to get in from the other side. Of course, there's a zombie there, and I have no weapon. I had nothing in my initial house. I mean, yay, it's great that we have access to a busted van. But that is it. Oof. I don't get a description of the skill if we mouse over it either. No, not really. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look through this window. See if this house is empty. Looks clear at a glance. Door is locked. Window is locked. I'm going to use our best sort of cat burglar skills to see if we can get into this house. Good idea, actually, to check all the windows first, because you can see if there's anyone in there. No. And then I'm a little worried to come over here, because, ah, no, we should be stealthy enough that no one will notice us here. Aha! Excellent. We can come in here. Let's uh, close the curtains to hide ourselves a little bit from the zombies. Um, same thing here. We'll close these. And, yeah, you can sort of walk through some of the things. I'm going to open and then close this door here, just to make sure it's unlocked, So we can, because we can unlock it from the uh, the inside perfectly fine. Anything in here? we got earbuds if we want to listen to a radio later on, um, more quietly, but I don't think that's worth necessarily grabbing. I mean, it's fairly light, but we really do have a kind of a tight weight budget in this game. As, uh, as I'm sure we'll run into. we got a battery over here for maybe powering a flashlight. We do have some books here. Now, some of these teach us recipes, like Engineering Magazine Volume 1 teaches us a crafting recipe. I'm just going to go and read it right away. 
And now it's already red. I'm just going to go ahead and drop it onto the ground. Um, expert first aid. So that's for higher skill stuff. Master fishing. Trapping for beginning. Uh, beginners we could consider if we're going to go and make a living out in the woods. But that's not really what I'm looking for. Um, I would love to grab, you know, these books and magazines for some entertainment. But the thing is, we have no... Oh, cooking for beginners is really good. All right, we're going to grab that. Um, we have no container right now, so hauling things around is going to be tough. There's some food over here. There's uh, some fresh chicken in the refrigerator. Nothing in the freezer. I mean, we have no way to cook anything. A jar lid? I don't know if that's useful. Matches? It sounds like the sort of thing that could be pretty useful. And is that really it in this house? <gasps> oh, man, this is going to be a challenge. Okay, let's go next door. This place with the backyard. A couple of... Uh, Dog kennels. I don't think there's any animals in Project Zomboid at this time. Let's peek in through some of these. No, no good. And then we can't get to the back. I could smash the window, but that seems a little bit dangerous. Now, I feel like I'm probably on the sort of upper left side of town, and I think that is true. Um, so there's a lot of, like, kind of, just very low-end houses around here that may or may not be the most profitable kind of scavenging area, but we'll see what we can, and then, yeah, if we move sort of down into the right, let's call it southeast, even though I'm not sure, again, what the cardinal directions are here. Uh, okay, there's a garbage bag. That's not very sexy, but what we can do is we can go and put a, the garbage bag in, say, our left hand over here. Oh, it doesn't actually show us. Um, and then we can use that as a container. So it's got capacity, uh, I guess we have to go here to see it. It can hold up to 20, like, kind of weight worth of stuff. And it does give it like a 10% weight reduction to things that are in there, which isn't much. And we're thirsty already, we got some dry mouth. Okay, well that's a no-go. If we keep heading in this direction, we will get to the river, sort of a natural edge to things. Oh, there you go. Uh, moving around a little. Just trying to get a little vision, actually. Let me peek through the front door. For all I know, the front door is unlocked. No. Okay. We can hop in through this window. And... Box of nails. Okay, well, I'm going to grab that. Because we might be able to make something spiked. Um, a little earlier about opening this door. Now, I have my own volume set quite low, because normally I do that when recording. But I think I'm going to have to crank the volume so that it can hear zombie action. Uh, we're going to read this to learn how to make a metal fence. And then we'll just drop it. We're here, we'll put it back in here. Um, no, we are thirsty, so let's go ahead and drink from the sink. Canned peas, pepper... I mean, that all sounds great. Okay. Alright, we're fine, but... Ooh, we've got bandages. Yes, that's good. Hairspray you can use in a recipe, but I don't think we're going to grab now. Lipstick, I think, is just junk that sort of populates the world. Check the garbage can. No, nothing notable in there. Hmm. Well, we've got another house here. But yeah, we are in... Uh... Ooh. What do we have here? Unread to make metal walls and roofs and things like that. Okay. We'll just read that and then drop it. Now, some of the skill books do take a long time to read, but these are things that are very fast. Yeah, see, these houses are just so small. They don't store very much, but they all, they do have little kitchens. Maybe we can find... Oh, there's a TV or a radio open. There's a radio there. And I don't want to close the door in case we need to make a fast escape. Okay, it is a television here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the channel to Life and Living TV. That was a loud sound from something. Uh, let's actually bring down the volume. So yeah, the Life, Life and Living TV kind of every day can have some sort of... Um, some sort of news... Um, or some sort of, like, informational show. There we go. And it'll give you a little bit of skill, either in cooking, outdoorsmanship, or carpentry. I think those are it. 
So you can see here we're getting some carpentry skills just kind of passively from listening to this. Very handy. Um, do we not have to spend the skill point anymore? Oh, they changed that! Which I think is better. It always led to really confusing things, and I don't think it was a very interesting system. You used to, like, you'd gain sort of level up XP, which would give you skill points, and then you had to learn enough skill in a skill to be able to spend the skill point in it. It was like two sort of disconnected things. Here to tell you something beautiful, something ice creamy. Oh, we're gonna get some. Let's just add. As I say, we're gonna get cooking skill. Mmm, ice cream. Uh, no containers in the bathroom. This is the message of the cows. Uh, belt. I mean, we already have a belt. I guess what we could do is we could, um... So we'd actually get less... Do we have, like, padded... Oh, we got jeans. Let me rip these pants so that we do have some, uh, ripped sheets. So we can use as potential bandages. Um, but yeah, in the kitchen... Oh, okay, hold on. We've got a few things. First of all, there's a carpentry for beginners. Okay. Yes, we're gonna grab that. Hand axe would so... Okay. I mean, the axe here is not a great weapon. On the other hand, we don't have a lot. I'm a little worried about being overweighted here. But some nice little tools. Uh, you can get a saucepan, which we can also use for cooking. I, guess we can, I don't even know if you can cook with a roasting pan. Fresh watermelon. Okay, let's grab this. We are a little bit peckish. I didn't put anything in the garbage bag yet. Um, we can extend this one. Let's see here. Oh yeah, we got the cooking and the carpentry for beginning. It would be great to read these before we get too far, but we're really not in a situation to do much. Are we just going to sit here and eat a whole watermelon? I guess we can eat like a half a watermelon. We're going to eat like a half a watermelon. Give us some food. We are overweighted right now. So... Wood axe, limited impact, hand axe. Damage. It feels like the wood axe is like our better pick here. Oh, it's two-handed. Yeah, ideally. Um, you know what? I'm fine with that. Let's go and equip this in both hands. The garbage bag's not doing much for us. We'll go ahead. Well, I guess it can keep it. It's not very heavy by itself. We just ate, so our um, strength is up a little bit, so we can carry a bit more. Okay. I'm a lumberjack, and I'm oh, trying to get through the, uh, the tree here. So, I mean, pacifist or not, we may need we may need the axe to smack a fool. We shall see. I think this like little preview of what tile your mouse is on is new, and should actually help with some of the targeting. Combat was a little weird sometimes because it wasn't always obvious which direction you were swinging in. Ooh, that's a big horde over there. Well. It's not actually a big horde, but it's more than I can handle. In this game, taking on a single zombie, when you've got room to maneuver, speaking of, there's one right over there, is is certainly doable. Taking on two at a time, often an invitation to die. Actually, I think there are two over there. Yep. Oh, three, in fact. So I'm really happy I didn't move that way. So I'm trying to be somewhat sneaky. Oh, yeah, that's where we came in. Okay. Well, this one's stumbling around a little bit. I'm going to go to crouch mode. So I, if I know where I am correctly, I want to go in this direction to hit the main part of town. Now, I think we're fairly stealthy even without us having to crouch much just because of our, our passive stats. Notice that, you know, you can quickly lose vision of people if you're not looking in the right direction. Um, I think there is some generic awareness of things like if you've got, like, you know, with hearing because there is, like, Hard of hearing and deaf as traits that are possible that can dramatically cut down on some of your awareness. There's a bunch of stuff with vision as well. So there's a body over there. Ah, oh, there's too many people. I wanted to check out the car. So we're going to have to go around this way. We can run, but running makes a lot of noise. And I really want to try to avoid doing that right now. At least, I do feel like if we do get spotted... I can probably take one at a time with this axe. Which we can also use, to, I suppose, to cut down trees and things. Oh, I think he's become aware of me. 
Yeah. All right. Oh, that is a slow swing with this weapon. Okay. I guess it kind of makes sense. And... Oh, you already died. Good, 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 good. Because normally you have to smack the shit out of things on the ground. We're very th hot, which is making us thirstier longer. I mean, we're not really wearing much, to be honest. It's probably just because we are exerting ourselves. Yeah, there we go. The, the, the heat went away. Just a hot day, I guess, and we were exerting ourselves, so... That's going to be tough, but yeah. We, uh, we are going to get thirsty very fast here. Sneaky, sneaky. Uh, are you... No, okay. I'll say, I, I was finding it hard to believe this guy would have noticed me. Yeah, they do shamble around a little bit. Okay, I think we're getting into town. Standing over a dead body. Burger joint. Um, hmm. Food. I mean, we really we need a backpack, which we're pretty much going to get from someone's home. Um, or if we get to a school, we may be able to find some sort of backpack. Ugh. The problem with going into town is there are going to be more and more zombies than on those outskirts. Which is very scary. Even with an axe. You better not actually... No, that was just a random shamble. Okay. By the way, there's tons of crafting in this game. Like, ludicrous amounts of crafting that is available. Um, you can make your own homes. You can do farming. Like, long-term survival. If you can swing it, you can build yourself a little house out in the country. What is this? Looks like it could be a grocery store. Got a smashed up car over there. Although, we should probably check the trunk. Assuming it's unlocked. Uh, we are overweighted. Yeah, we're very thirsty, so we've lost a little bit of our carrying capacity. We're down to 11 here. Nope. Can't open you. Come on. Oh, there we go. Still got inside. Check the seats. Ooh. The glove box has, I mean, more matches. But that is it. Oops. Get out. Thank you. Oh, there is a down body over here. Let's just see. Nope, not interested. All right, what is this place? If it is a bit of a grocery, we might be able to find ourselves some, some pop or bottled water. Canned soup, peanut butter. Okay, um, let me come back to this. There's th this must be a grocery. Uh, a bowl can be used to carry liquids. Um, around with us, although we prefer like a bottle of water, or water bottle. Oh, there's tons of containers. Um, actually, let me go back here. Griddle pan, scissors, which we can use for certain crafting. Okay, we're going to go inside the main store, I think. Coffee, roasting pan. Oh, is it like a department store? Okay, no, there are some goods over there. Let me check this door. There we go. Bathroom. I'm gonna drink some water. Anything in this trash can? Sheet of paper, smash bottle as a weapon. No, we can um, we can fill. We've got a saucepan. We can fill it with water. Although that will be very heavy. I'm gonna wash myself. That's new. I don't know. Must make me feel a little bit better, maybe. Uh, possible clothing racks, dresses. Anyone just outside? No. Leather gloves. Yeah, defend my hand. That seems like a good thing. We're going to wear that. We got pants, but we're wearing jeans and we're happy with it. Doesn't look like there's anyone outside. I'm just going to toggle these doors so that they're unlocked for the future here. In case they were. Cooking pot, rolling pin, canned soup, kettle. Now, our carrying capacity is still garbage right now. Frying pan would enable quite a bit of cooking, but... 
cleaning liquid. So many cigarettes here. Well, this is, I mean, this shop is great. The fact that it's, you know, open to us. My god, I look like a real murderer here with these gloves. Um, might be worth no, the weight. Saucepan full of water really is going to weigh us down a lot, but we may have very little choice if we are going to wander around. I think this is a really nice little site for us. And there's no one out front. Lock is broken. Can't get in there either. There's a laundromat and some more shops over here. We really found a nice little quiet area. Plastic bag it can give us some carrying capacity, but alcohol wipes, yes, please. We got ourselves a map. Here we can read a newspaper, get a little entertainment out of it, just consume that. Credit card doesn't do much for us. Um, if we go ahead and uh, read the map, so the map of West Point, which is not where we are. I don't even know if it's worth carrying it around. It's not very heavy, but. Yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and drop that over there. And pop out of this car. And we might go and put a cut in here at some point. We've got Petra the, the axe murderer. Our clothing's starting to get a little bit bloody over here. Um, has, you know, survived her first episode, which is something. Oh, we got another little shop over here. Whiskey bottle. Hello. Now, I mean, booze is great by itself, and we're thirsty, and the thing is, though, we can actually get quite a bit. We're going to eat the rest of the watermelon, um, which is going to help with the thirst. Also, she might give us, like, positive nutrition, which will go and buff our, um, there you go, our strength a little bit. Health and strength, so we've got a carrying capacity of 14 temporarily. Um, oh, there's a key there. That might be for that car. What is it? Chevalier Niala. I don't know. We'll put it on the key ring. Just keep it organized. It might be for that. We'll take another look. Yeah, okay. Uh, check the bathroom. Oh, no, no, storage room. A little wire for crafting. Some bleach if we want to kill ourselves. Seriously. Nothing in the vending machine? Ah. Oh, oh we got uh, washer and dryers so that we can clean our clothing if we want, which might be a high value thing. Um, you can go ahead and drink here. So yeah, just out of care, we're at 9.42 weight. If we were to fill our saucepan with water... Yeah, so it's another one unit of weight, which is quite a lot. But, it means as we wander around, we will be able to, um... It'll drink. If we get thirsty, it'll automatically drink. Yeah, we do have the, the, uh, the key to this. Have we checked the trunk? We got a jack. I don't know if I got into the front seat here or not. Yep, no, I did. Key in the ignition. It's got no fuel, unfortunately. Hmm. And we're not much of a mechanic. We can take a look at the state of the car. I don't think there's much uh, future in this. Yeah, that is, that is in pretty poor shape. So I don't think that car's in our future. But... Well, we're going to put a cut in here, and um, we're going to keep exploring the town next time. Folks, thanks for watching. I'm going to see you then. Bye-bye.